If you have gaps in your business process monitoring because your current observability platform doesn't give you the option to monitor end-to-end -end business processes where the data comes from different data sources, from external and internal systems, then check out this session. I just recorded a detailed demo with my colleague Alistair, who showed me how Dynatrace can do end-to-end -end business process monitoring, extracting data not only from the one agent, not only through the API, but also by extracting business relevant information from logs, extracting it, converting it into business events to really give you an end-to-end -end view. No more gaps. Check out the session with Alistair. Welcome everyone to another observability lab. Today, we're again looking at business analytics fueled by logs, because believe it or not, there's a lot of information in logs that we can use for end-to-end -end business observability. Last time I had Klaus here, today I have Alistair. Hey, Alistair, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing, Andy? Very good. Hey, I wanna jump right into the topic and I actually wanna bring up on the screen now uh, something that you have actually showed to me, a dashboard that you've recently built. Can you explain a little bit more about what we see here and then also how people get to this and what we have built in Dynatrace to actually make this type of business analytics possible? Yeah, absolutely. So the view that we've got on the screen here is maybe slightly different to what we typically have where it's focused around a specific application or something maybe very technical. This is looking more at an end-to-end -end business process. And in this example, it's a retail delivery process that mm -hmm. actually starts with the bit the user does in the browser of doing an online order. And then it goes through the order being processed. It goes into the warehouse. It's then off into the shipping part where it gets to you. Uh, and then it gets delivered successfully at the end. Um, so instead of looking at maybe these steps in isolation or maybe specifically the performance of the website, we look at the performance of the business process or the business journey as a whole um, and try and look at more higher level business KPI metrics. Cool. And um, I know Klaus talked a little bit about uh, the business flow app, and I think you will also go into more details. Today, we talk about really how business analytics and boundaries can be fueled by logs. And maybe you want to start a little bit explaining the background and how this all technically works before we go back into a live demo. Yeah, absolutely. So business analytics as a topic can obviously be quite broad. So we normally talk to it in terms of these three use cases. Um, today, specifically, we'll be focusing on the left two to do with real-time analytics and, and business processes. Um, and there is the third one to do with sustainability and costs, which um, I'm sure we'll get to at some point. Um, so in terms of you know, a business process that we then might want some real-time analytics on, in our case, we've got an e-commerce example with orders being picked, which is our you know our website all the way through. Um, and what we want to understand is what's the success or the experience of that whole journey. And to understand each of these different touch points along the way, we need to capture something that we have in Dynatrace called uh, business events. Um, and that could be anything. It could be that someone's placed an order successfully um, there are other examples from different sectors here, like someone checking in you know, at an airline, that sort of thing, or filling out a customer satisfaction survey. And where we can get those from nowadays is, you know, it's pretty much anywhere. So the one agent that we deploy on applications can pick up those events live as they're happening. We might get them from an API, from something external, or more recently, what we're able to do in the purpose of the talk today is we can actually get those business events along the top there from log files mm -hmm. so what that might look like in our specific example is in the first two steps of our journey so picking the item and getting it packed in the warehouse the one agent is actually able to pick those up itself um, for the order received there might be an api with our delivery company that we can get those events from but for the shipping part of the process, it might be a really old system that perhaps we can't deploy one agent onto. Um, it might not have an API that we can interact with, but it does output log files 
And that's where we can go inspecting those to understand when's an order been shipped, when's a delivery attempt been made. You know, those those types of events, if if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's a great overview and very representative on what we see out there with many of our the users that we talk to, because there's different systems where you have different types of ways to observe the system and get information out of it. And you had it here with the one agent with the API and also logs. I also remember some uh, of our uh, users that we work with, like the delivery attempt or the order. Uh, if you have external vendors that are actually doing the shipping, they can then also send their data into Dynatrace to an API. And that's uh, it's really cool to then be able to do the end-to-end -end business process observability. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, so in our specific example, these are some of the logs that we're taking a look at. Um, and this is just a mm -hmm. selection of different log entries. So in there, we have a multiple useful things. So in the content of our log file, we've got something we'd refer to as a correlation ID, which is what we can use to place this event in the context of a single business process. Uh, we also have a message in there, which in this case is a, a bad one. So order shipped system outage. We have some topology information so we can understand what system output this message you know at what particular time because it could be that certain um, business processes that flow through certain sets of our IT infrastructure mm -hmm. get more affected than others so we've we've got that context there and because it's a log file we've got some sort of log level or status which in this case is an error which tells us something incredibly useful that something has gone wrong um because that's often a thing not to forget is it's great to know that a process is happening, but it's also really important to know when there's a problem in that process. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, how do we go from that to extracting it into our data site, which is business events? And that's where the new capabilities we have through the open pipeline come in. On the left here, you've got all these various different ingest sources. Um, in the middle, you've got these data pipelines that we can run things through. And for this specific example we have, we've got a log file that's being generated on this old system. Uh, it gets rooted into a logs pipeline. And specifically what we're doing in this case is called data extraction. So that's saying, if a log entry looks like this, then we want to extract a new event out of it, which would be our business event, which means it then gets re-ingested through the pipeline as that new data type, as a, as a business event. It goes back through the biz event pipeline and we do some processing on it to maybe make the names a bit nicer or reorder the fields, perhaps something to, to tidy it up. And once that's finished, it will then go and get stored in Grail and that's where we can do the analysis, we can build the dashboards and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? The, I guess it, the makes, flow of, it makes yeah. a lot of sense and it's really great uh, because I know Open Pipeline is a new component within our Dynatrace observability platform, allowing you now to define data pipelines with the different phases, processing, metric, data extractions, and until the data gets stored. I really like your animation because it really nicely visualizes what happens once we extract data and then convert a log into a business event. Now, my question now would be to you, why would we, what's the benefit besides having the data in a different format and, and extract it to have it as a business event and not as a log? Why don't we just keep it as a log? Yeah, very good question. Um, and so there's three main uh, reasons that we look at for doing this. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, possibly the most important one, this concept of separation of concerns. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time log data will be used for you know, troubleshooting and technical use cases. Um, whereas what we can do with this, we can extract the business data out of those logs. So you know, the logs still exist for spotting errors and technical problems. But then we have a separate set of data that is purely business focused. And that's actually then what enables the other two reasons mm -hmm. here. So access control. It could be that I'm fine with 
support teams, ops teams having access to logs for observability use cases. And then I can give separate access to business data to business teams, maybe application owned or product owners, those types of people. Um, and it means that the third use case then are ease of access. Mm -hmm. Because we've got everything in the same data type, any queries, any visualizations that we want to write, those then become a lot simpler because although it's completely possible, we don't then need to look through lots of different data sources. It's all in one, one uniform place. Yeah. So very cool. So if I can recap, we have a, potentially a lot of logs and some of this information in those logs is business relevant. So with our open pipeline, we can basically say which logs are relevant, which pieces of the logs are business relevant, extract it, convert it into a business event, which means maybe we throw away the initial log statement at all because nobody needs it or it contains sensitive information that regular folks should not need to look into. But if it extracted as a business event, which then goes through its own pipeline and then gets uh, stored and persisted in what we call a Dynatrace bucketing rail with access control, um, retention rate is different and, and all that. Really cool, I think really well explained. Um, can we see a little bit live? I always like slides, but I think one of the things that I like about these events is that we can also see some demos and how this looks and feels in the product. Absolutely. So I'll just switch over now to my browser, which is actually mm -hmm. the, the dashboard that we had up previously, but now mm -hmm. hopefully you can see by the clicking that it's, yeah. it's the real thing. So we've got our end-to-end -end process and you can see here we've got the shipping step, which is the bit that is powered by the log data that we've captured. Mm -hmm. um, and we've even defined in this case a business KPI on the the shipping step, which is the success rate. And so we've introduced a problem here where orders are not successfully shipping and that you know, deducts from our KPI, which is which is why we've gone red there. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of other things. Once you've obviously this data has come from logs, it's business events now, and it's now on a dashboard. Um, you can make use of things like Davis to do auto baselining of any metric that you can extract out of that. Um, and then we can also try and build upon um, just the raw metric data to infer things like business impact. So just an example here of how many vouchers have we had to offer because of you know, these poor experience with shipping. Mm -hmm. So this is a you know, quite a high level dashboard view of the world. Um, the business flow, which is a, a separate app in Dynatrace to the dashboarding, um, this is a specific business flow that represents that entire end-to-end -end delivery process. And the one that I've got up on the screen now is actually, without the shipping data, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So we have the initial steps like placing an order, going through the warehouse, mm -hmm. um, but there's a big gap here. So we pack our order, then we completely lose track of it, and then the order gets received by someone. Yeah. And it looks great, you know, there's there's no errors. No, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taken slightly longer than normal, but it looks it looks generally okay. Whereas if we then contrast that with the full end to end picture, now that we've plugged the gap with the shipping data, we're up to 409 errors, which is not so great. Mm -hmm. And it means that we can understand these missing steps here. So from the order being packed, we can see the order trying to be shipped. Um, there might be a delivery reattempt. That's a, an optional part of the process. And then it gets received by the customer at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I mean, and I think this is a great visualization. Also, I like the editor. It's very, as I told Klaus in the other video we recorded, uh, it reuses from a Dynatrace perspective, uh, similar components, what we have in our workflow. Um, it really allows you to then model your business process. You can see how business processes are flowing or how individual business instances are flowing through, through your process. And this really nicely visualizes, as you said, filling the gap of individual phases of your business process because now we can easily ingest data from logs, business relevant data from logs, convert it into, into business events, and then uh, analyze it as part of your end to end process. That's really, really awesome. Um, 
Alice, there's anything else? Do we want to have a quick look into the open pipeline? Uh, because I know you mentioned this and it's rather new, so people have may have not seen it yet. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the what I've got on the screen now, the new interface to open pipeline. Um, and you can see some of the options available already, like and specifically now we've got logs and business events that we that we look into. Um, for this particular example, what I did is I've got a route and a pipeline. So my route says I want these logs to go to this specific pipeline to be processed or have data extracted. So I use I've not got many logs in my environment, so I used a matcher that looked for specific phrases in the logs mm -hmm. and if that was a match it puts it into this shipping logs pipeline which is just under here so if i go into that specific pipeline uh, i do a bit of processing in there so mm -hmm. within the content of the log file itself we've got the correlation id which i've extracted and renamed as the order id to make it uniform with all the other events um, and then i've extracted out the message um, that was in the content of the log so that we can use that as well mm -hmm. and the other thing that i've done is this data extraction so i've said okay well for that particular log event i want to extract it out with an event type that is using that message that we pulled out and the provider so the kind of source of this business event i've just called retail.logs because that's you know, just a nice generic one mm -hmm. and also get all the fields because at some point we also might want to use those so that's the two steps that's all that i needed to actually pull the biz events from the log events that we have so far that's awesome wow cool uh, and yeah so the open pipeline app for the is basically it's an app in dynatrace uh, it comes by default since it's been shipped, so everybody has the Open Pipeline app um, in your Dynatrace tenant, right? Assuming you're obviously on SaaS, and then you can define your own processing rules and uh, just basically do the same thing that Ellis uh, just did. Anything else you want to show here? Uh, not in this place, but I would say um, where you can find all these apps where you mm -hmm. can get into the business flow. We've got the Dynatrace hub. Um, business flow is one that you'll need to go and uh, proactively install. It's actually you know, the, the main screen of the hub. You should see it at the top here. Um, mm -hmm. So business flow, and then presuming you've got permissions, you can come in here, you can install it uh, or request to get it installed. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, Alistair, thank you so much. And with that, I want to quickly put us back on the big screen. Hopefully this works now. I need to click and still get familiarized with my system here. Um, folks, if you have um, business processes and you want to now use uh, Dynatrace and try it out, uh, check out the links. In this description of the video, you'll find links, again, to the Business Flow app, to other content we've created. There's already blogs out there um, that also explain uh, the new capabilities we have. And Alistair, I know you've been working with many other users of Dynatrace and you have many other use cases, so we'll definitely have you back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ciao. Bye-bye.